This conference offers a unique forum for productive interactions among African national identity management agencies, as well as potential transformative exchanges between these agencies and global experts from the identity and biometrics industry. I have been impressed by the latest identity management innovations on display, and I believe that they constitute a significant indicator of this exposition's transformative potential. We consider sound identity management to be essential to the integrity of the state because we recognize its immediate implication for the effective management of our democracy, society, and the management of our economy as well. Good governance entails effective administration and efficient management of the economy by a legitimate government authorized through democratic elections. Accurate information about the population resident within our territory is absolutely indispensable. To validly constitute government, we need an accurate idea of how many voters how many people, how have they voted, so that we can effectively deliver public services and make it possible for citizens to explore opportunities and also deliver public goods. The government also needs accurate information on essential attributes of citizens and other residents of a country in order to provide them with services and otherwise allocate resources for their benefit with a measure of efficiency and accuracy. Moreover, the provision of public services also depends on the deployment of personnel and associated resources throughout the country in such a manner that the purposes and objectives of government are realized to the utmost. Transactional efficiency in the provision of public as well as private goods and services depends on a capacity to establish the identity of agents and quickly and accurately. Those of us from the continent of Africa, we want to have a candid conversation on how we can leverage on the huge resources we have, especially energy resources from wind, from solar, from hydro, from geothermal, to be able to sort out the big question of energy that is influencing world development. Africa can become a critical player in sorting out the challenge of climate change. We need to listen to what we are saying, and we want not a finger pointing, not a blame game. We want a win-win outcome out of this conversation. We want, as a continent, to bring the assets that we have, the energy resources that we have. We want others to come with technology, to come with investment, and have a conversation as to how we can not only deliver clean, green energy in the African continent, but we can also help other continents to be able to overcome their challenges of fossil fuel energy by exporting some of our resources through uh, hydrogen uh, technology to other parts of the world and sort out the big question of climate change using climate financing, climate investment. Um, uh, two days, a week ago, I was discussing with the Prime Minister of Singapore how Kenya can assist Singapore in selling them some of our carbon credits to manage their own situation. This is the kind of discussion we want to have so that we can have a win-win because we have only one globe to share. It is not the North versus the South. It is not Africa versus other continents. We have only one globe for all of us to share. We are in it together. Either we are 
sinking together or we are floating together. And I think I choose we float together. <laughs> we appreciate the investment and the opportunity to work with uh, others in our continent. And it is the, it's the right thing to do. It's also good for us to know that Africa is the continent of the future. By 2050, a quarter of the world's population will be living in Africa. We will have developed a very big market. It is the youngest continent with a GDP of 3.5 trillion. We are currently consolidating as African leaders, we are consolidating Africa into a single market. In fact, through the Africa continental free trade area, Africa will be the largest single market by 2050 in the world. Any business person, any entrepreneur, any uh, technology provider must know where the future is for you to begin to make the necessary investments and to begin to have the necessary network for you to have uh, yourself properly positioned in the continent of the future. And we will be open for business and we are looking for a win-win uh, uh, formula that will harness all our potentials, build on the successes, build on best practice, and be able to support not just our continent, but to support uh, humanity in making sure that we have a secure, we have um, a, a, a prosperous uh, globe for us, for all of us to share. We will be discussing in Paris shortly, the international financial system and a new deal that will bring lenders and borrowers together. Because the lender cannot do without the, the borrower and the borrower cannot do without the lender. But there must be a mutual win-win outcome for it to be sustainable. That's the conversation we will be having to discuss a new international financial system that gives opportunity for every part of the world. At the moment, our very considered view is the current international financial system is rigged against some, where other sovereigns access international financial resources at less than 1%, others access with more than 10%. When you are trying to deliver public goods, you cannot do it in a system where one pays 100 times more than the other. And we are not asking for a financial system that favors anybody. We are asking for a fair one that gives everybody a chance. <laughs> this is the conversation we are going to have, and I am very happy that uh, the people who will work with us, even as you think about identity, you must also know that we share one globe, and we are all on the same side. Once more, I affirm my profound delight at being able to participate in this timely, appropriate, and fundamentally transformational conference. I wish you fruitful deliberations and look forward to the outcomes of your deliberations in due course to share in Kenya, in our continent, and globally so that we can have a much more progressive home for all of us. Thank you very much and God bless you. Kenya has established a strong track record of sound identity management practices anchored on a national population register that is underpinned by the maintenance of a shared fingerprint biometric system. The register captures the data of adult citizens, residents of, national, of foreign nationals, refugees, as well as other protected persons. Aside from this, Kenya also maintains a robust civil and vital statistics registration system. 
the government has instituted measures to ensure 100% registration of births and deaths by 2026. Article 12 of our constitution sets out the entitlement of every citizen to rights, privileges, and benefits of citizenship, and to a Kenyan passport, and any document of registration or identification issued by the state to all our citizens. The state is therefore committed by implication to the full implementation of these clear constitutional provisions without any question or delay or any other excuse. In addition, these constitutional imperatives is aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and more specifically SDG 16.9 under peace, justice and strong institutions to provide legal identity for all, including free birth registration. We are investing as a continent and specifically as a country about 30% of all our resources in education, training, and research. And because of that huge investment, we are developing a human capital. And about 30 million Africans join the labor market after undergoing various levels of education. I would ask that even as we develop the expertise around this field, even as we work with professionals and experts and designers, we have millions of young people, talented, tech savvy in our continent that can be trained, that can work with experts from the rest of the globe. And in a very short time, we should be able to not only do what Colin Howell is doing by Africans in Africa, but we can also begin the journey to export that talent to other parts of the world. Any leader is judged not just by what they accomplish, but by the mentorship they do to the next generation. You must position yourself as part of your success to develop the next generation of designers, the next generation of professionals. And I say so very passionately because Africa is the youngest continent with a mean age of about 20. And with technology, the young people that come out of school, I, my estimate at the moment is about 30 million every year, they have what it takes to provide the human capital, the labor of the future, the designers of the future, the scientists of the future, just with a little bit of working together and building the necessary ecosystem that will tap into uh, this talent. I want to ask the policymakers who are here, ministers, principal secretaries, that you must keep an eye, not just on what is available now, who we can work with now, but we must also keep an eye on making sure that we tap into the millions of the young people in our continent to give them the opportunity to contribute their talent and expertise going into the future. I think it will be the greatest appreciation for those who have assisted us to come this far that we can give back and get young designers from Africa to help design IDs and identification documents in Europe, America, Asia, and all the other places that have been very kind to us to assist us in what we have been doing. Like what Colin said, he said he's looking forward to working with us 
even to working with Kenya on our new passport and our new identity uh, infrastructure. The only caveat I will give to him is that it will be possible for us to work with you only if you are willing to work with our young people, our experts, our designers, so that we can be able to pass on the experience that is developing, the scientific knowledge that is developing, so that the young people we are developing in our continent can also contribute their talent, their ideas, and their suggestions into the ID, uh, the identification infrastructure of the future. I am proud of the progress we have made towards the achievement of this ambition, including notably granting of Kenyan citizenship to members of various communities which have lived in our country as stateless persons since independence. We have people from Mozambique, whom we have uh, granted Kenyan citizenship. We have people from Pemba, whom we have had uh, to grant them uh, citizenship. We have other communities that we are considering because we believe the globe is continuously getting integrated. We are even working with the, the UN agencies to see some of our refugees who can then be considered for citizenship uh, in Kenya because we appreciate that continuously we are living in a global village and all of us must be able to work together towards a homogeneous uh, society. We have embarked on a national program to digitize government records and information and automate public service provision to enable Kenyans access government services from the comfort of their homes using their devices. The aim is to significantly cut down transaction costs and minimize opportunities for corruption by eliminating unnecessary bureaucracy and also increase transparency in government and efficiency in the provision of government service. Over the past year, we have increased the number of services available on the digital platform from 320 to 5,000 and intend to cover all services that government of Kenya provides. And I think we have identified close to 7,000 services. All of them should be available on a digital platform by the end of this year so that citizens from the comfort of their homes or their offices can interact with government, can access government services in an efficient, effective, timely manner without unnecessary bureaucracy. Because of this ambition, Kenya is among the earliest of its continent's peers to establish a policy framework for data protection which includes comprehensive legislation and regulations to safeguard privacy and personal data. I know it's a big concern. People don't, don't want their medical records. They do not want their personal data to be abused or to be used by people who are unauthorized. And that is the reason why we have a comprehensive data protection um, uh, legislation that provides security for the use of data that is available on the digital platform for people who are only authorized to access that information. This identity uh, journey must not erect barriers and roadblocks. It must just serve the good purpose of identity for ease of movement so that using agile technology and identity um, systems, we can be able to make it much more easy for people to travel, for people to cross borders, because they are easily identifiable, and we can easily separate the good guys from the bad guys. That way, and I am talking to those of us from our continent, 
we should be able to eliminate the barriers that currently impede our ability to work together, to trade together, to invest together. We all know that the level of intra-Africa trade has been, has been impeded by our inability to work together. As you work on these digital identity management systems, you must be sensitive to the fact that Africa is lagging behind in matters of trade with the, between ourselves. Our identity ecosystem must facilitate us to actualize the tenets and the principles of the Africa continental free trade area that provides us an opportunity to trade, to increase intra-Africa trade from currently less than 10% to where Europe and the rest of Asia and the Americas are around 50-60%. We can be able to unlock huge potential in our economies by facilitating the movement of people, goods and services in our continent and be able to unlock the great potential that exists in our continent. Today, we are contributing less than 3% of world trade. It's not that we do not have tradable goods. It is not that we do not have the men and women to do it. It is because we are not working in concert. We are not working with synergy. And hopefully the professionals who are here from our continent will want to appreciate that going into the future, we must make the world better by making our contribution. We have 17% of the population as we talk, yet we contribute only 3% of world trade. We must up our game, and hopefully those of us who are here can begin to talk together and work together, work in concert, work in uh, synergy, so that we can unlock the potential that exists in our continent and also be able to meaningfully contribute to the progress and the prosperity of the world by making our contribution to world trade, world commerce, and world enterprise. Give us the opportunity to balance trade between our continent and the rest of, this, of the continents. It will also enable us to make a contribution to world trade and commerce and business. This conference is quite timely insofar as it takes place while the government is deliberating the implementation of a civil registration and vital statistics system that meets the imperatives of a new digital era. The new system must be able to assign unique personal identification numbers at birth to all persons born in Kenya, upgrade the current national identity card into a national digital identity management system, and adopt the most sophisticated advanced passenger information solution to address the entry and exit of our borders and ports. I challenge all participants especially identity management practitioners from Africa, to collaborate with Kenyan colleagues in sharing their experience, strengthening thought leadership, and exploring possible innovations to achieve greater integrity and efficiency in this sector. I also encourage industry experts to generously share their insights and apply their unique expertise in digital public infrastructure in order to generate solutions that will enhance the entrenchment of data sovereignty, both in Kenya and throughout Africa, as we learn from best practice across the globe. Data privacy for registered persons is an essential component of our public mandate, and we must take every possible measure to safeguard it at all times. We operate in an environment of escalating resource constraints, and yet, at the same time, we cannot postpone or downgrade our identity management endeavors. 
Our development partners, therefore, have an opportunity to explore possible areas of collaboration with our state departments for immigration and citizen services to support our identity management programs. And I want to say here that uh, we're looking at all, all options when it comes, when we are discussing resource constraints, among them public-private partnerships, joint ventures, and other interventions that will bring the private sector to provide public service in a manner that is affordable and in a manner where there is shared outcomes, shared profits, and bringing the expertise and professionalism of the private sector into the delivery of public goods and services.